Reminder, we will be here every Wednesday at 1 o'clock until further notice, continuing to keep you up to date on coronavirus in Rhode Island. If you aren't able to tune in at 1 o'clock on Wednesdays, I would encourage you to sign up for the daily email. You can do that at governor.ri.gov. Governor we will send to you a daily email and an email on Saturday with the week's recap to keep yourselves informed. Um, so we'll begin today as we always do with the data. Yesterday, and I ask you to please put that on the screen, yesterday we performed uh, over 4,700 tests and saw a percent positive of 1.8. Um, that means we saw 86 new cases and very sadly, another three deaths. Uh, I would say, I would say this, 1.8% is a very good number. Uh, it's, you know, we wanna be certainly below 5% and anything below 2% is excellent. Uh, I will, however, say that a week ago we were lower than that and in you know in the past week or so we've gone from uh, one percent to 1.3 1.5 now 1.8 percent not a reason for alarm however a constant reminder to every single rhode islander we're not out of the woods the virus remains with us and we cannot let our guard down the reason you know, some people say, oh, Governor, we have a percent positive is low. We're, we're, doing, we're fine. We're great. Let's, let's go out and live the way we used to. That's not right. The reason our test positive is where it is and we're doing well is because we're not letting our guard down. And so I will say just I'm, I look at this every day, all day, and I'm sharing with you 1.8% is a good, safe number. However, a week ago it was lower, and we just cannot let our guard down. Wear your mask, wash your hands, stay home if you're sick, keep the windows down and wear your masks if you're in a carpool. If you work in a close in contact business, be extra careful, get yourself tested. You know, let's keep our, let's be vigilant so we can keep each other safe. Okay, four or five topics I'd like to get through today. I'd like to begin today as, as I do, um, giving you a report from our business inspections over the past week. Uh, good news is we are seeing consistently excellent compliance continually as we have seen over the past several weeks. So thank you. If you're a business, small business out there, uh, retail, restaurant, if you are a customer, I wanna say thank you. We've been at this a long time. We're all sick of it. I think I can assert that confidently. We are ready for this to be behind us, but it isn't, which means we have to keep being vigilant and you're doing a terrific job and I wanna say thank you. Last week, out of nearly a thousand businesses inspected, employee and customer mask wearing was around 96%. 99% of businesses complied with capacity restrictions and only three bars had some crowding in the bar area. That is fantastic. A month ago, I was imploring bars to do a better job. You have heard, you've answered the call, and I want to say thank you. Unfortunately, we did see a decrease in compliance um, with separation between the bartenders and customers, down from 94% to 88%. So I would ask you to, again, as I was saying, please stay vigilant and keep that distance between the customer and the bartender. Additionally, last week we saw another increase in the number of businesses doing health screenings at the door, up to 87%. That is an improvement, thank you. It's still not where we want it to be. Truthfully, that should be at 100%. At this point, there's, there is no excuse not to be doing some kind of health screening prior to somebody entering the business. It could be a temperature check, it could be a survey, it's gotta be something. 87% is better, but it should be 100%. Uh, as a reminder, there's a new feature on the Crush COVID app that makes health screenings easier. 
for both businesses and customers. Just fill it out, and if you're symptom-free, you get a green smiley face, and you can use that green smiley face throughout the day, wherever you go, to show you're symptom-free. So I would encourage businesses, uh, if you're not doing any type of symptom screening, you need to do that. And it could be as simple as asking everyone who walks in to show you their smiley face from the Crush COVID app. Okay, uh, second thing is I just want to talk for a minute about schools. B big week in Rhode Island. It's an exciting week. Um, schools went back, kids went back to school on Monday. Uh, and by and large, we're having a great week and we had an excellent return to school. Uh, Monday, of course, was the first day back. I spent m most of Monday, I got, got the chance to visit a couple of schools and see how happy and excited these kids were to get back to school. And I spent the rest of the day talking to superintendents and school leaders and just, you know, seeing how it went. Um, you know, there was still the first day of school excitement. It was pretty great to see. It was, um, it was a great thing. And, uh, you know, everyone had to wear their mask. I saw the kids all had little hand sanitizer. They were having their temperatures checked as they went into school. Uh, but we're doing it. You know, we've never done anything like this before. We've never, and I hope we never have to do it again. The magnitude of this effort is impossible to overestimate, and uh, we're doing it. We're, you know, look, it wasn't perfect. We have, we have to do better. We will do better. We'll get better each day. But I am incredibly proud of everybody who works so hard in order to get these kids back to school. The vast majority of students in Rhode Island over 100,000 Rhode Island children chose in-person learning and faced with these unprecedented obstacles, most schools across the state stepped up and delivered for these kids. Uh, the doors of most schools were open and accepting children and it was a great thing. Um, so I wanna thank you to the teachers, to my own team, superintendents, principals, Everybody out there who played a role in it, the maintenance crews. I had a chance Monday to talk to the maintenance crews at, at some schools. You've been really working overtime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're on the right side of right getting these kids back to school. It is not easy. It will not, you know, it, we're going to have our issues, but we're doing it, and the children and Rhode Island will be better and stronger for it. Monday was also the launch of our K through 12 testing service. As a reminder, uh, what we're doing here in the state of Rhode Island, which I believe is unlike any other state, we've chosen to set up a separate dedicated K through 12 testing and contact tracing system. That's how we committed we are to the safety of teachers and educators and students and school building employees. We set up a separate system for testing and contact tracing so everybody who works in a school or of course goes to school can have quick, rapid, free access to testing and contact tracing. We have 14 testing sites all across the state just for the school community. And I'd ask you please to put this, the slide on the screen that describes that. We went live on Monday, and so far, so good. On the screen is a phone number for the K through 12 test scheduling service. Uh, so this is, this is a number that everybody wants to jot down. If you are, uh, you know, if you're a parent with a child in school, if you're a student, if you're a teacher, educator, school nurse, anyone who works in a school, superintendent, you know, anyone who has anything to do with K through 12 schools, public or private, write that number down, 844-857-1814. It's a scheduling service to schedule your test, COVID test. It's operated seven days a week, 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. And we're committed to providing same day appointments every day, except Sunday, all across the state. Um, I, would, I wanna say this, 
we want to encourage everyone who is in the K through 12 system who needs a test or wants a test to go through that number and go through the separate K through 12 testing system. Um, obviously, if you call your doctor and get a test that way, that is fine. You're going to get your test. You're going to be taken care of. But if you use this system that we've set up, we can guarantee same day results. We can guarantee you'll hear from the Department of Health contact tracer on the same day. And it helps us to just guarantee the quality uh, of what you're going to be getting. And, you know, we're not turning anyone away. We've had lots of teachers show up without appointments. and. You know, we prefer if you please make an appointment with that number, but we'll, we're happy to test you. We are there because we want this to go well. We want everyone to have top-notch service, and we want to keep everybody safe. Um, so I want to thank everybody for making that possible. When you call the number that's on your screen, you can schedule a, fr a test, which is free. You get an appointment at one of the 14 sites. By the way, if we have to add more sites, we will, but we're just starting with 14. And I'm going to just to remind you how it's going to work. If you feel sick, if you have symptoms, you're going to receive two tests. You're going to get a rapid test, and you'll have your results that day. And then you're also going to get the more definitive PCR test, a little more accurate, and you'll get those results within 48 hours. Even if your test comes back negative, you cannot go back to school until you're symptom free for 24 hours. So we'd like you to wait for the results of both of your tests. And if they're both negative, and if your symptoms have gone away for at least a day, you can go ahead and go back to school. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to visit one of the testing sites. I was at East Providence, and I was incredibly impressed with what I saw. Big thank you to the National Guard. Uh, big thank you to the mayor and superintendent who, who helped us, and they're coordinating with us in East Providence. Um, the, the testing site there, and I'm going to share this because they're all like this. Um, there's plenty of free parking. It is outdoors. They'll get you in and out quickly, and again, you'll get your, your, if you're symptomatic, you'll get your result by the end of that day. So, and this is how we hope to run these. That should be your experience. I know this is an anxious time. Everybody's anxious. People are afraid. I understand that. So we want to do whatever we can do to help you feel more confident and calm and we're hoping to make this as hassle-free as possible. Um, obviously, bear with us. We've never done this before. But um, if what I saw yesterday in East Providence is the way this is going to go, I feel great about our testing and contact tracing system. Uh, the superintendent out there got herself tested as a precaution. She was asymptomatic. She went in at the start of school on Monday. And before school was out, she had her results, which were negative. Um, okay, over the last two days, um, I would say, as I said, it's going very well. I want to tell you what we've done. We've swabbed at those 14 testing sites just about 300 people in two days. In, of those 300, we had eight positive cases. So that's just the K-12 numbers. 300 swabs, eight positive cases. I do want to be clear, though. There were another 11 positive cases associated with schools, so for a total of 19, but those 11 weren't in our 14 dedicated K-12 swabbing sites. Those are folks who called their doctor because they felt sick and got tested outside of the system, which is fine, and I'm happy you got tested. But just again, if you're in the K-12 system, it would be better if you could call that 844 number on the screen and schedule your same day test. In every instance, the 300 swabs and the eight positive cases, in all the eight positive cases, those individuals were contacted the same day. They were isolated immediately and their close contacts were all quarantined. So. 
we're off to a very good start and we're going to have to work hard to keep us there. The rapid response to every case is the, is the key to keeping a lid on the virus. Um, and listen, we will continue to see cases in school, just as we've seen cases all summer long. But based on what we're, I'm seeing, I'm confident we have the systems in place to handle it. Dr. Alexander Scott is going to talk in a few minutes um, in, in greater detail about what we're seeing. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make to you is we have a separate system. We're at it now for just a couple days. We did have, we've swabbed 300 people, we found eight positives, and in every instance, they were contacted that day, put in isolation, and the contacts of those people were quarantined. And continued. That's a really important point. We want to get to a place where someone can test positive, we, we do our system to keep a lid on the virus, and school continues. So, so far so good, and we have so, what seems to be a robust and um, sturdy system. In addition to the testing service, our Education Operations Center has been at the ready to help schools with their needs. To give you a flavor of what that looks like, we've received over 100 calls since school started at the command center. Um, to give you a sense of the calls, people asking for, schools asking for clarification on guidance for schools, questions about probable cases, um, asking for clarification, asking for seeking information, a lot of what do I do when, how do I deal with this, which is exactly why we've set up this, this central operations center. Uh, and I would encourage you in schools to call the operations center. Since Monday, we've deployed more than a dozen assistance teams to help schools with everything from containing positive cases to reviewing mitigation measures to operational check-ins with school leaders. Um, these teams have also set up virtual health and safety trainings for teachers, nurses, and other school staff. So, and we're going to continue to do this. We're going to keep that command center open. You're going to have questions. There are going to be issues. You're going to get confused. Pick up the phone, call the operations center. If we have to, we'll send a team out to your school. We can do a, a virtual meeting. We can answer your phone, answer your questions over the phone. Um, so if you take something away from this, it is, we're working hard to do the right thing by our children and families to get the kids back in school. We've set up whole new robust systems to test and contact trace and deal with problems as they arise. We are far from perfect. We are three days into a brand new unprecedented system to meet the needs of an unprecedented crisis. But as a governor and as a parent, uh, I have confidence in the system and I hope you do too. And if you're having trouble, let us know and give us a chance to try to fix it. Okay, a couple other announcements. Um, a few weeks ago, we launched the Take It Outside campaign. It's a new initiative to make it easier for businesses to move their activities outdoors. This has really taken off. This is, this is very cool and I'm so inspired by the innovation. Big companies like Citizens Bank and AAA are moving their businesses outside, allowing people to, to do business outside. Small companies, restaurants, yoga studios, offices are um, doing fitness outdoors, dining outdoors, having meetings outdoors. The, the next few months, we ought to be able to continue to do this. It is much safer outdoors than indoors, and we want to help businesses continue to operate outdoors. Um, in fact, this week, I have the chance to meet three pretty incredible women who have really taken the, um, the call to innovation to a whole new level. Uh, Dr. Legina Bickham and her sister, Loretta Bickham Talbot, and their dear friend, Pamela Gordon, have been bringing socially distanced sophistication to parks and shopping centers across Rhode Island. They came to visit us at the State House this week. They are gorgeous. They are in beautiful colors, and they're showing 
what we can do. Um, I talked to them and they said, you know, Governor, for a long time you've been saying what we can't do, but let's focus on what we can do. So I wanna thank you ladies for being innovative and creative and positive. Uh, and I wanna thank all Rhode Islanders to, for being positive. Let's, let's, let's have a can-do attitude and figure out what we can do in order to keep people at work, back to work, kids in school, and keep ourselves healthy and moving forward. So to this, um, today, as part of the Take It Outside campaign, I'm announcing that we will be making an additional million dollars of our stimulus money available to municipalities and businesses um, through chambers of commerce and industry associations to fund initiatives that make it easier to do business outside. So heating lamps, outdoor furniture, tents, bike racks, Wi-Fi, tables, chairs, lighting. Sometimes these tiny investments, I was at a restaurant just the other night and the restaurant owner was saying, I wish we could get our hands on some heating lamps so we could stay outside eating on the sidewalk longer. Those small investments go a long way to keeping businesses in business. So we're beginning with a million dollar investment. We're gonna be getting that out. Uh, comp Commerce is gonna be posting an RFP for these funds today. Applications will be approved in the next few weeks. And it's all um, part of the Take It Outside campaign. So if you're a small business and you're hearing this and you think you could use a hand with some funds to buy outdoor furniture or a heating lamp or Wi-Fi or lighting, go to Take It Outside RI, Take It Outside RI, and uh, starting later today, applications will be available and you can go ahead and apply, apply for funds to make those purchases. Um, as we're talking about small, small business, I have another announcement around small businesses. Uh, the Restore RI grants, which are the grants for small businesses, are moving along. We've, until now, we've provided just over $7 million to um, over 800 small businesses across Rhode Island, and we are continuing to accept and process those applications. And to, as a reminder, until now, I've dedicated over $100 million of our COVID relief fund to supporting uh, Rhode Island's economy and businesses. And half of that is through this Restore RI grant program. Um, we've talked about this in the past, and I have said we wanna continue to reach out to small businesses. So in that spirit, today, I am announcing that we're expanding eligibility to that program. And starting next week, we'll be accepting applications from sole proprietors and other businesses with no employees. We are also expanding eligibility by lowering the revenue loss requirement from 50% to 30% and allowing any business with fewer than 50 employees to apply for the grants. Previously, uh, the cap was 20 employees. It is our hope that with these changes, uh, many more businesses will apply, will be eligible, and will be able to start receiving the Restore RI uh, grants. So again, sole proprietors, we're expanding the program, sole proprietors, businesses with no employees, businesses that have had a revenue loss of greater than 30%, it used to be 50%, uh, and then businesses with fewer than 50 employees. All of you can apply for, for Restore RI, and all of this information is available um, on the Commerce website. Relatedly, I wanna talk for a minute about our back to work initiative and extended unemployment um, insurance. So last month, I announced a uh, ambitious, first of its kind in the nation initiative to get Rhode Islanders back to work. Um, it's, it is brutal out there. It, if, you, if you work in hospitality, retail, uh, at a restaurant, I'm sorry, I know it's really hard. 
And I know some of these businesses, restaurants and small retailers, retailers um, might not make it. But we want to be there for you so that you can get a job. And so, to, and that might mean that you need to get yourselves new skills. As, you know, if you have worked for 25 years as a clerk at a retail shop and that's all you've ever done, uh, you probably are going to have to re-educate yourself and get new skills in order to get a new job, a stable job. Uh, the same is true in restaurants. If you have made a living um, balancing as a waitress and a store clerk and now you're out of work from both of those, it's going to be hard. And so we want to be there for you and help you to get a job, to get a good job, and to get the training you need in order to get that job. So the initiative that we launched is called Back to Work RI. We have commitments, hard commitments, from a numerous employers, including CVS, Electric Boat, Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, Infosys, many more, hard commitments to hire 3,000 Rhode Islanders by the end of the year. And we are specifically focused on people who've lost their jobs during COVID and people who need skills or credential or a degree in order to get a new job. So the, as a reminder, Department of Labor and Training is running the initiative. If you're out there, if you are, have lost your job, and if you are eager to work and willing to get some new skills, check out the Back to Work initiative, Back to Work program. We are using our federal stimulus dollars to pay for the training. So the training will be free to you. Also, if you need a hand with childcare during the training, we're, we're gonna provide that. If you need a hand with transportation during the training, we're gonna pay for that. CCRI is doing some of the training, New England Tech is doing the training, other partners are doing the training. So I know this is hard. It is hard to research, to relearn, and to get a new job. But this is a unique opportunity to do that. And this isn't train and pray. This is get trained, won't cost you anything to get trained, commit yourself to getting yourself through the program, get your credential, and there will be a job at the end of the training. It may be in a different industry than you're used to, but we are there for you um, to try to help you accomplish your goals and get back to work. The key piece of the puzzle for this happening is matching folks, matching folks who are unemployed with the jobs that are available. And today I'm announcing a new public-private partnership um, with a company called Job Case. Job Case is the third largest online job seeker platform in the country. Actually, already 60,000 Rhode Islanders are on their program, are on their platform, and are active users. Today, I'm announcing that Job Case is partnering with Rhode Island's Department of Labor and Training to enroll, help people enroll in back to work training initiatives. They've created a special back to work forum to share information and updates with members. So if you are listening to this and you're interested in ongoing information or updates about the back to work program, or you wanna find a job through this, create a free job case account and join the back to work Rhode Island group. If you're out of work, do it today. Check it out, there might be something there for you. And it might be an opportunity to restart your career and get back on your feet and find something, um, a new job that we, in one of our local businesses. I would say I hope, I have, um, I have a lot of hope and, and confidence in the Back to Work initiative. I think it can be a long-term solution for a lot of folks that are unemployed. There is a particular emphasis here on people who've been left out of the labor market. You know, these employers have agreed to hire you even if you're formally incarcerated, even if you don't have a college degree, even if you've taken time out of the workforce. In fact, that's explicitly who we're targeting if you're out of work due to COVID. Having said that, I know people need immediate relief. 
The job six months from now doesn't pay the bills today. So last week, supplemental unemployment assistance of up to $900 went out to thousands of Rhode Islanders. Um, I want to remind everybody this federal program was retroactive. You were eligible to receive $300 per week if you certified for unemployment benefits during the three weeks ending August 1st, August 8th, and August 15th. Today, I'm excited to share that we've successfully lobbied the federal government for an additional three weeks of support. So beginning today, the Department of Labor and Training will be distributing an additional $300 per week to those who certified for unemployment benefits for the weeks ending August 22nd, August 29th, and September 5th. So it is up to an additional $900 if you certified as unemployed those weeks. You don't have to do anything to get this money. I'm just sharing this with you, hopefully a little bit of good news, help you to pay the rent and, and get through. The money will be automatically deposited into your account if you're eligible. The first $600 will be deposited by early next week. So if by this time next week. And then the final $300 will be deposited within a week after that. Um, I want to thank FEMA for providing these funds. I want to thank the amazing team at DLT for processing these funds and get them out the door as quickly as possible. I do want to say that um, the federal government has made clear to us, at least at this time, that there will not be any additional funding available after this. But to those Rhode Islanders who are unemployed every week during that six week period, you'll be eligible for a total of $1,800 and I, I hope that helps you make ends meet. Last quick thing, we have heard from people saying, I only got 600, not 900, 300, not 900. Again, the way it works is it's $300 a week for every week that you certified as unemployed during those eligible weeks. And you don't need to do anything. We're going to start getting them the additional money out the door in your paychecks starting next week.